Hello everyone, welcome to weekly contest 279 and I hope the contest went well for you. Today we'll be solving all the questions of this contest and let's do it for the first one. Sort even odd indices independently. So let's get started here in this question we are given an array of integers. We need to rearrange this input array such that sort the values of at odd indexes of nums in non-increasing order. Non-increasing means decreasing order. Sort the values at even indexes of nums in non-decreasing order. Non-decreasing means increasing order. We need to return the updated array. I'll be walking through you the examples as well as three approaches to solve this question. So stay tuned. Let's quickly have a look at the presentation. Sort even and odd indices independently. Lead code 2164. So let's get started. I have taken a slightly longer example so that you get a good hold of the concept. The input array is something as 20, 1, 3, 4, 7, 19. What do we need to do? We need to sort the values at odd indexes in non-decreasing order. Non-decreasing means uh, non-increasing means decreasing order. So let's try and identify all the values at odd indexes. First one is this, next one is this, next one is this. We need to rearrange them in non-increasing order. That means decreasing in nature. So the updated array should be something on those lines 19, 4 and 1. Similarly, we need to sort all the values at even indexes of nums in non-decreasing order. Non-decreasing means increasing. That means all the values at even indexes 20, 3 and 7 should be sorted in increasing fashion. As a result of which we will get 3 first followed by 7 followed by 20. So this is the resultant array that we need to return. The first naive approach that comes to everybody's mind is to create two arrays one for the odd indexes one for the even indexes so what i'm gonna do i'll create my odd indexes array something like this uh, we have one we have four we have 19. we have one we have four we have 19. i'll sort it up uh, it, it's not necessary that this will be sorted in nature i'll sort it up in decreasing order as a result of which my updated array would become 19 4 comma 1. Similarly, parallelly I'll create another array of even indexes that would be equal to 237. So 237 gets added there and again I'll sort those up. It will be updated to 37 comma 20 and now I want to merge these two up. So this is one sorted array. This is the another sorted array. I have to alternately pick even followed by odd. So first will be 3, then it would be 19 followed by 7, then it would be 4, then it would be 20 followed by 1. And this is what we need to return as per our expectation. The time complexity of this approach uh, would be order of n log n, where n signifies the length of half of the number of elements that are there in the input array. Also you would need extra space for sorting those up. So this is a naive approach that comes to everybody's mind. Now let's look at the other approach that we can talk about or think of. So the other approach is you create priority queues uh, you, and one will be a max heap and the other one will be a min heap. So let's create one max heap and next one would be min heap. So what all elements will be part of max heap? Mac, all the elements at odd indexes. The first one is this one, next one is this one, next one is this one. So max heap will have 1, 4 and 19. All these elements added to it. It will internally sort those up in decreasing fashion. Similarly min heap will have 20, 3 and 7 elements added to it. It will sort those up internally in increasing fashion, fashion by virtue of being a min heap. Now again what you can do, you can alternatively pick the elements one by one. Once you have added these to the max heap, the uh, array, the elements would be arranged in a decreasing fashion and we'll have 19 at the topmost element followed by 4 followed by 1. Similarly here we'll have 3, 7 and 20. So let's get started. Now let's start filling the output array. First one we'll, we'll pick up the min heap first, we'll have 3 followed by 19, then we'll have 7, followed by 4, 
then we will have 20 followed by 1 and this is what is expected and we have finally built our answer 3, 19, 7, 4, 20 and 1. This is the second approach we can, that we can think of. The third one is also an interesting approach because if you go and read the question carefully, you can see that the elements lie in the range of 1 to 100. What you can do, you can create two frequency count arrays, one for the odd indexes part, other one for the even indexes part and you can appropriately build the frequencies of all the elements that lie at odd indexes and all the elements that lie at the even indexes. So let's get started. First we see 0 and at, we have the value of 20. So that will go as part of the even indexes and we will update the frequency of 20 to 1. So 20 frequency gets updated to 1. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is an odd index. So the frequency of 1 gets updated to 1 in the odd index frequency count array. Next we have is 2 and at 2 we have 3. So this contributes to the even index and the frequency of 2 gets updated. The frequency of 3 gets updated to 1 because the value that we have here is 3. So let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 3 and 3 is an odd index. At 3 what value do we have? We have 4. So the frequency of 4 gets updated to 1. Next we read ahead, next we have 4, 4 is an even index, at even index we have value 7, so the frequency of 7 gets updated to 1. Let's proceed ahead, next we see is 5, 5 is an odd index and we'll store the information in the odd frequency map. Uh, we have the element as 19 and it gets updated to 1. Now you have appropriately built in the frequency maps, what you can do? Now you need to just iterate through them and build your answer array. How? Let's do that. So let's get started. Uh, we'll have six elements definitely 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and let's get started. What I'm going to do, I'll start with an even index first followed by the odd one and uh, even one will go in the increasing fashion whereas the odd one will go in the decreasing fashion. So the first element that we see is 3 and uh, we will add it into our answer result. So 3 gets added. Then we have 19 here, so 19 gets added. Then we have 7 here, 7 gets added. Then we have 4, 4 gets added. Then we have 20, 20 gets added. Then we have 1, 1 gets added. So crisscross fashion. This, then this, then this, then this, this, then this. Awesome. This is the expected result. And we have solved this uh, without using any sorting logic, using the bucket sort technique. And let's quickly walk on to the coding section and conclude the approach. Let's walk through the coding section. I'll be showing you the priority queue approach. I have created two priority queues, max heap and min heaps and appropriately defined them a comma b hyphen b minus a and here we have a minus b. I start the iteration i equals to 0 i is less than nums dot length and since it's the beginning of the odd and in even index what do I do? I add elements in the min heap. And with each iteration, I'm incrementing i by two units. Similarly, I reiterate and I add all the elements corresponding to max heap. The initialization condition would be i equals to one, the odd indexes part. Now, since I've appropriately built in or added elements onto the min heap and max heap, I'll finally create my nums array, the answer result. I create a variable i equals to one. I keep on extracting minimum elements from the min heap and I keep on adding them starting from the 0th index uh, and with each iteration I add uh, or increment the value of i by 2 units. Similarly, uh, I update the value of i to 1 once I am out of this loop until the time my max heap elements are not null. That means I have not traversed all the elements. I keep on adding them one by one and with each iteration I increment i by 2 units. Once I am done with this, I simply return the nums result. I have not quoted the count sort logic. It's over to you guys to do it by yourself. I hope you had a great time watching this up. And this brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll solve the rest of the questions in the upcoming videos.